Okay, I think uh, we can start now. A uh, wonderful evening to all members of PBAID from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. I am very excited to impart new things for tonight's discussion in our drug-free Philippines movement. Our topic for tonight is all about Drug Control Prevention Week from the Dangerous Drugs Board programs. It is related to our current situation here in our country and why and that's why we should address this issue but before we proceed i would like to introduce our guest speaker and co-hosts in our drug uh, in our tonight's program i am asking and by the way i would like to ask an apology to everyone that uh, we don't have um yusik or sabedra for unexpected emergency meetings but here with us a uh, representative in behalf of Yusik Earl Saavedra, Miss Ella Marie um, Di Makulangan, uh, Ripum Manta, and Attorney Marlon Yap. These guys will discuss better knowledge for better care. This year's Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week celebration aims to encourage all sectors of the society to be involved in improving the understanding of the drug problem resulting in better cooperation to strengthen health and enforcement initiatives. Okay, allow me to introduce the representative from the Dangerous Drugs Boards, Assistant Chief Management Information System Division of the Dangerous Drugs Board. Okay, please welcome Ms. Ella Marie Di Makulangan, Ripomanta. Go ahead, Madam. Please introduce yourself. Yes, hello, everyone. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Magandang umaga, Sir Mark, at lahat po ng participants natin this evening. Uh, si Pastor Gary, magandang gabi po. Nakita kita ngayon sa screen na lang. Dati <laughs> Opo. Yes, Ma'am Ella. Good evening po sa inyo, like you, oh. Pastor. Um, Good evening po sa inyong lahat and hopefully makapag-share po ako sa inyo ngayon ng knowledge for our uh, drug prevention and control initiatives. Uh, should I now start the presentation po? Uh, later na lang po, ma'am. Later na lang. Uh, uh, Introduce ko muna yung next speaker. Okay, thank you Ms. Right. Ella Marie. Uh, you are very much welcome to our program Drug Free Philippines Movement. Our next guest speaker Please allow me to introduce our very own active and energetic leader of PBAID, the director of Lapu Lapu Cebu and the CEO of Solas Drug and Alcohol Rehabilitation Center. May, may we please welcome Attorney Marlon Yap. Hello, good evening, everyone. So proud and uh, very honored not to be chosen as one of the speakers. And I'm very glad that I'll be able to, you know, at least impart some knowledge about this affair that we have now, which is Drug Control and Prevention Week. So especially that we have a representative from the Dangerous Drugs Board. Marami po akong tanong. So I'm so excited to have this day started. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, attorney, you are very much welcome here in our program. Let me also introduce myself. Um, my name is Mark Kadili, your host in Drug Free Philippines Movement and the Vice President of PVAID or People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs. Before anything else, I would like to present our NGO in what we do and what are our advocacy all about. The People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs is a non-government organization accredited by the Philippine Enforcement Agency to engage activity in preventive control of illegal drugs and substance abuse using the two components of the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy, the drug supply reduction and the drug demand reduction and col collaborative support of these three subcomponents, the alternative development of TV awareness response and the regional international cooper cooperation purpose to conduct people empowerment activities and enhance the drug demand reduction approach through preventive education and values formation in every 
barangay in order to increase the psychosocial awareness about the evil effects of illegal drugs and substance abuse and its its effects to society please take note we are different from the supply reduction strategy from the government which is the war on drugs we promote social awareness to through basic education and literacy program livelihood youth program and sports public image and interagency collaboration we will leave drug supply reduction to the law enforcement by the government now back on our topic and our discussion tonight according to the philippine news agency dated june 25 2020 global drug use soars 30% in 10 years united that, uh, according to united nation so ibig sabihin tuma tumataas ito sa panahon ng pandemya ng 30% Geneva, around 269 million people use drugs worldwide in 2018, 3% more than in 2009, while over 35 million people suffer from drug use disorders, as a UN reported said Thursday. The report released by the United, uh, Office, United Nations Office on Drug and Crimes UN Odyssey in Vienna also analysis that analyzes the impact of coronavirus disease COVID-19 on the drug drugs markets. While the pandemic effects are not yet fully known, the report said that the borders and other restrictions linked to the pandemic have already caused shortage of drugs on the street, leading to increased prices and reduced purity. The report noted that the rising unemployment and reduction opportunities caused by the pandemic are also likely to af affect the poorest excessively, making them more vulnerable to drug use and even the drug trafficking and cultivation to earn money. So, ito yung tinatawag natin kapit sa patalim. Mapipilitan ang isang tao na gagawa ng illegal nagawain para lang kumita at mabuhay vulnerable and mar marginalized groups youth women and poor paid the price for the world drug problem said un odyssey executive director gada wali the covid 19 crisis and economic uh, uh, downturn threatened to compound drug dangers further still when our health and social system have been brought to the brink and our society and our societies are struggling to cope so meaning uh, so ang na, na natamaan nito yung mga mahihirap na marginalized groups mga kabataan at mga kababaihan so kawawa naman so in my opinion dapat may mga sustainable development projects kaya tayo in our ngo we have, we promote livelihood programs to combat poverty and eventually helps people to stay away from illicit drugs let us ask ourselves so are we part of the problem or are we part of the solution not the problem dangerous drugs board leads the na nation in the celebration of the drug abuse prevention and control the dopsy week from november 14 20 to 20, 2021, pursuant of the Presidential Proclamation Number 124, dated November 26, 2001, the third week of November has been declared as Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week to promote public awareness against evil effects of illegal drugs use, as well as the encourage public operation in the anti-drug campaign. A virtual program joined by different national government agencies NGS, local government units, non-government organization, tayo yon, schools and faith-based groups with a team, better knowledge for better care. Drug Abuse Prevention Control Week celebration aims to encourage all sectors of the society to involve in improving the understanding of the drug problem resulting in a better cooperation to strengthen health and enforcement initiatives. Kickoff celebration featured the launching of the new pads, infomercial, 
and showed the 2019 National Household Survey on the patterns and trends on drug abuse video. Now, let us view the a few mi minute video presentation from PADS, okay, for a while. Mapayapa, matatag, maunlad na buhay ng bawat Pilipino. Ito ang layunin, hangad ng pads, kaya kami ay nagsusumamo. Ang Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy o PADS, kaagapay ng DDB at ibang ahensya sa mga pulisiya ay kasado. Ang DDB ang siyang nangunguna sa Drug Abuse Prevention and Control. Katuwang ang iba pang ahensya, adi kay pinagtitibay nila. Taing ang kaliwat ka ng krimen, kabataang naligaw ng landas, mga pamilya ay nawasak rin sa droga na wawala ang lakas. Alam mo ba, sa droga ikay talo, hirap mag-aral at magtrabaho. Kahit walang droga, kaya mo to. Dapat lang, umiwas tayo dito. Dama ng pads ang inyong pangamba, kaya alamin ang dapat gawin ng pamilya, eskwela, kumpanya, lipuna na ikakibat natin. Papublikong lugar, paralan o sektor ng gobyerno privado. Bilang sa ating pamahalaan, pagiging drug-free, dapat pasado. Sa mandato ng EO66, ang Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy o PADS ay established para paigtingin at itatag. Pagsubpo sa illegal na droga na matagal na nating problema, ay eh para sa isang umaga, tayo makinig at tumalima. Drug supply and drug demand reduction, ito ang nakikitang solusyon. Pigilan ang paggamit ng droga, ikalat ang tamang impormasyon, bigyan pansin ang isyo sa droga, kapatay di isasang tabi para sa isang magandang umaga, batas at pads ang ating kakampi. Pilipino, tibayan ng loob, tarat makisalit makisama, pangambat takot, huwag papalukob, sumama, gawin natin ang tama. Mga kabataan ay iligtas, kinabukasay na sa lalay. Paano kanilang magandang bukas kung sa droga na may nalupaypay? Kaya tawag namin ay pakinggan. Samahan niyo ang gobyerno dito. Maging ehemplo ng kabataan. Ito ang tugon ng Pilipino. Mapayapa, matatag, maunlad na buhay ng bawat Pilipino. Ito ang layunin, hangad ng pads. Kaya kami ay nagsusumamo. Alamin kung paano sumuporta sa ating laban kontra sa droga upang masagip mga biktima para sa isang magandang umaga. Mark, wala kang audio. Okay. Um... Guys, ito yung video na information drive campaign program sa Dangerous Drugs Board. Again, let us also watch a short message from Yusik Earl Sabedra. Kanina lang nila ginawa ito, guys, kaninang umaga. Nang effort dito si uh, Yusik sa ano to, para lang uh, mapahatid ang kanyang mensahe sa ating lahat ngayong gabi. Okay, we will play the video. In a while. Every November, DDB takes pride in leading the nation as it celebrates a Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week. This celebration becomes more significant because of the convergence of the public and private sector to rally behind one important cause, and that is to create drug-free communities. DAPSI also serves as a platform for us to look back and evaluate what we have done insofar as our anti-drug efforts are concerned. I am sure you will realize that we have accomplished a lot, 
but so much needs to be done as we move forward. I pointed this out because as we solidify our anti-drug plan of action, we are building blocks to create more impactful programs, more effective services, and more significant policies. After all, what we have committed to do is to establish a holistic and balanced drug campaign which the Filipinos proudly support. Nung inilunsad po ang Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy or the PADS, naging panata po ng DDB na gabayan ng mga institusyon sa pagbalangkas ng mga inisyatibo upang maging bahagi ang anti-drug campaign sa kanilang agendang pang-seguridad at pangkalusugan. Importante po ang whole of nation approach sapagkat hindi lamang ito laban ng gobyerno. Mas mahalaga ang ambag ng bawat Pilipino sapagkat sila ang nasa komunidad na maituturing vulnerable pagdating sa paggalat ng ilegal na droga. Kaya po ako ay nagsusumamo na patuloy na watayong suportahan ng ating mga kababayan upang hindi masayang ang ating sinimulan. Binabati ko po kayo ng isang matagumpay na Dapsi Week Celebration. Salamat po sa pagkakataon na makasama kayong lahat sa araw na ito. Patuloy po nating hangarin ang magandang kalusugan ng lahat sa pamamagitan ng ibayong pag-iingat. Okay, that was a very encouraging and powerful message from our Yusek Earl Sabedra, Executive Director of the Dangerous Drugs Board, Philippines. Okay, guys, uh, this is the moment that we have been waiting for. Let us hear also the discussion of our guest and co-host. May we first call on Ms. Ella Marie de Makulangan Ripumanta. Madam, the floor is yours. Go ahead, Thank you. Thank you, Sir Mark. I hope you can hear me clearly po. Okay naman po yung okay audio naman. po. Okay, go ahead po. So let me share my brief presentation. I, have to be, I hope to be brief about this para po I can accommodate questions since later if you have. So um, you've heard from our Executive Director under Secretary Earl P. Saavedra and he sends his apologies kasi he has an equally important engagement tonight. Kaya po ako ang pinadala niya to discuss kung ano po ba itong Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy at ano po yung ginagawa ng ating pamahalaan uh, to address our problem on illegal drugs. Alam niyo po, kami po sa Dangerous Drugs Board, natutuwa po kami dahil may mga organisasyon, katulad po ninyo, ng People's Volunteers Against Legal Drugs na nakikita sa ating kampanya at um, nagsiselebrate din po ng ating Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week. Katulad po ng sinabi kanina ni Sir Mark, um, every third week of November has been declared as a Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week by virtue of Executive Order number 124 dated 2001. So since 2001 po, taon-taon sineselebrate po ito nating Drug Abuse Prevention and Control Week. And actually po, uh, ito po yung nagiging gathering ng mga anti-drug advocates natin nationwide. Ang ginagawa po namin before the pandemic, iba't iba pong cities and municipalities yung nag-host ng ating DAPSI Week. Pero since hindi po natin ito nagagawa sa ngayon, nagkakaroon po tayo ng mga virtual programs at natutuwa po kami dahil patuloy pong sumusuporta yung mga organisasyon tulad ng uh, People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs dito sa ating advokasya. So let me proceed with my presentation. Let me just start po by um, imparting with you kung ano po ba ang Dangerous Drugs Board. Sigurado naman po ako na this is not the first time that you've heard of our agency dahil kayo pong lahat ay mga anti-drug advocates. So the DDB, we are the highest policy making and strategy formulating body on drug prevention and control. So lahat po ng policies, lahat ng strategies, mga programa na ini-institutionalize natin. Lahat po yan ay galing sa Dangerous Drugs Board o dumadaan sa Dangerous Drugs Board. Um, alam ko po, alam nyo rin, kilala nyo rin ang PIDEA or ang Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. Ang PIDEA po ay isa sa miyembro ng Dangerous Drugs Board. So kasama po namin ang ahensya nila sa pagbuo ng mga pulisya na siya namang ini-implement nila. 
ang PIDEA po ang implementing arm ng DDB. So lahat ng ating mga policies na ginagawa, kasama pa ng ibang mga ahensya, kabilang na rin ng PIDEA, ang nag implement po niyan yung ating Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency at ang iba't iba pang mga organisasyon na naatasan natin o tumutulong at sumusuporta sa ating mga programa. Ayan, so ito po ang ating um, vision. We envision drug-free communities. We are committed to stamping out the illicit supply and demand, illicit supply of and demand for dangerous drugs and precursors. And we also promote regional and international cooperation. At sabi ko nga po ang amin pong vision, drug-free communities. Ano po bang ibig nating sabihin ng ating drug-free communities? Pag sinabi po ba nating drug-free communities, ang ibig sabihin po ba nito ay zero drug use na talaga? Zero supply of drugs, wala na talaga nagodroga. Ang ibig, syempre po lahat po tayong gusto natin ganon. Talagang wala pong magdodroga, walang mga supply ng droga dito sa ating bansa. Pero ang ibig po namin sabihin ng drug-free communities, masasabi nating drug-free ang isang community kung lahat ng systems are in place, available lahat ng mga programa, kung sakali man na meron pong uh, madala or malulong sa influensya ng droga, meron siyang malalapitan sa community niya pa lamang. Hindi na niya kailangan lumayo, readily available yung mga programs para sa kanya. So kung may magkamali man na gumamit ng droga, meron po siyang malalapitan sa ating mga komunidad. Yan po ibig sabihin ng drug-free communities. The systems are in place. The programs are institutionalized. Tuloy-tuloy po at sustainable ang ating mga programa. Yan po ang ating invitation. Now, ang mandato po ng EDB, this comes from Republic Act 9165, which amended po yung dati nating batas na 6425. Ito pong 9165, or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002, it provided stiffer penalties for drug use. Kung mababasa niyo po yung ating batas, I'm sure attorney Marlon Yap knows this. Uh, ang mga penalties po doon halos uh, lifetime imprisonment to death. Yun po yung mga penalties natin from for uh, drug trafficking, manufacturing. Pero the law also gives premium to preventive drug education and also treatment and rehabilitation. So dyan po nanggagaling ang mandato ng Dangerous Drugs Board. Alright, so ang DDB po, isa po kaming board, Dangerous Drugs Board nga po, and we have 17 members, tatlo po dito are designated as permanent members, from, their, uh, from the three permanent members po, ina-appoint ang aming chairman, and our current chairman is Secretary Catalino Espoy, we have two permanent board members, we have Yusek Benjamin P. Reyes and Yusek Gilberto D. C. Cruz, sila po ang aming permanent members and we have 12 ex official members we have regular members at meron po tayong mga permanent consultants so the slide on your screen shows yung mga members ng DDB or ng Dangerous Drugs Board kung mapapansin niyo po uh, halos lahat ng major agencies dito sa ating bansa ay miyembro ng board so nandiyan po ang Department of Health Department of Justice local government Social Welfare, Department of Foreign Affairs, pati Department of Finance, ang DOLE, Labor and Employment, National Youth Commission, Department of Education, lahat po yan membro ng Dangerous Drugs Board. Kasama na nga po yung PIDEA as our implementing arm. So yung mga ahensya pong yan, yan po ang mga nag-uusap-usap para makabuo ng mga policies natin in the form of board regulations and board resolutions. Ito po mga regulations sa ito para po siyang batas. Ah, parang ah, they exist in the form of a law and kapag ito po ay inilabas or ah, inaprobahan ng Dangerous Drugs Board, ito po yung susundin ng lahat ng mga stakeholders nating involved. We also have the IBP as a regular member and an NGO representative. Pero sa ngayon po, Vacant pa po yung ating NGO representative. So, hindi pa po siguro na kapili. Ang nag appoint po kasi nito ang ating Pangulo. So, hopefully po, the next president will appoint the new NGO representative to the Dangerous Drugs Board. And malay nyo po, isa po ang, ang NGO ninyo sa mapagpilian po for the NGO representative position in the board. 
We also have the PNP and the NBI as our consultants. At kung mapapansin nyo po, tinan nyo po yung mga ayansya natin. Meron tayo from the law enforcement, meron din po tayo mga social agency. So makikita nyo po talaga na our approach is a balanced one. So hindi lang po tayo puro law enforcement. Nandyan din po yung ating mga uh, social agencies to provide the balance to our strategy. Now, uh, let me go to the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy. Sabi ko nga po sa inyo kanina, isa sa mga task ng DDB is to formulate policies and to create a balanced and comprehensive national strategy. Thus, we have the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy or what we call PADS. Ito po yung napanood niyo po kanina dun sa infomercial natin, yung ating Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy. This strategy was institutionalized through an executive order issued by our president, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, uh, on October 29, 2018. So bukod po dun sa members ng Dangerous Drugs Board na nakita nyo kanina, ito pong pads, itong executive order ni, ng ating presidente, this directed all government agencies, departments, bureaus, pati po mga GOCCs, and uh, state universities and colleges to implement PADS in accordance with their respective mandates. So lahat po ng ahensya ng gobyerno, lahat po yan pinakikilos natin, mag-implement po ng mga programa on drug prevention and control. Halimbawa po, uh, ang LTO, ang Land Transportation Office, kasama po yan sa ating mga PADS implementing agencies. Siyempre, ang mandato po nila for our land transport sector, for our drivers, for our uh, mga miyembro ng ating transport personnel. Ano po yung mga programa na ginagawa nila? They help us ensure na yung ating pong mga drivers ay magiging drug-free. So they provide education, they also provide programs on drug testing, random drug testing, uh, preventive education sa ating mga drivers, conductors, and uh, yung mga operators po natin. So, according to their mandate, sila po ay nagsasagawa ng mga programa on drug prevention and control. Now, ano po ba yung ating strategy under the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy? So, this is our strategy statement. Tinatanong po kasi tayo lagi, so ano ba yung PADS na yan? Lalo na sa mga international uh, organizations and agencies. Ano ba yung pads na sinasabi nyo? So this is what we tell them. This is our strategy. We want to achieve drug-free communities through supply reduction efforts involving aggressive law enforcement and prosecution with strong adherence to the rule of law and observance of human rights coupled with comprehensive demand reduction initiatives and supported by strong regional and international ties. So, yan po ang kabuuan ng ating strategia. So, nagfo-focus po tayo sa supply reduction efforts, aggressive yung ating mga police operations, pero kaakibat po niyan yung ating mga demand reduction programs. And um, this includes po yung ating mga advocacy campaigns, preventive education programs, at kasama na rin po yung treatment, rehabilitation, and reintegration. Ayan, so ito nga po yung sinasabi natin lagi na balance strategy. We have the two main components ng ating PAS. We have the drug supply reduction kung saan po inilalayo natin yung droga sa communities through market denial operations, mga anti-drug operations na ating law enforcement. We also have, on the other hand, yung ating drug demand reduction programs kung saan yung mga tao naman yung ilalayo natin mula sa pag-aabuso ng droga. And this is through uh, preventive education, through research, treatment, rehabilitation, and reintegration. Ayan, so let me just share with you po yung ating mga anti-illegal drugs initiatives under the new normal. Kanina po si Sir Mark, binabahagi niyo, binabahagi niyo sa inyo yung isa sa mga studies ng UNODC on drug use worldwide. So nakikita nila merong pagtaas sa paggamit sa illegal na droga. Dito po sa Pilipinas, bagaman nakikita natin na pababa or decreasing yung trend natin hindi po nawala yung drug use na nagkaroon ng pandemya. So, kung isipin natin lockdown, paano pa sila makaka-access ng droga? Meron pa rin po. 
uh, uh, meron pa rin paggamit ng droga at marami pa rin po tayong nauhuli na mga nagbebenta, nagmamanufacture ng illegal na droga. So tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yung ating mga programa. So ano pong ginawa natin nung nagkaroon tayo ng pandemya? Huminto ba yung mga programa natin? Hindi po. Nag-adjust po tayo ng mga programs and we adopted and we adjusted to the new normal. So isashare ko po sa inyo itong mga programa na ito kung saan maaari rin po kayo maging bahagi. Now, sabi ko nga po, ang main function ng DDB is to formulate policy. So, paano po tayo gagawa ng mga polisiya e naka-lockdown or naka-quarantine yung mga personal ng ating mga ahensya, yung ating mga officials, they are working from home, hindi po tayo nakakapag-conduct ng mga face-to-face -face gatherings, ng meetings. So, ang nangyari po, naging virtual na po yung sessions ng Dangerous Drugs Board. Ang, DD po, ang board po kasi, nire-represent siya ng mga leaders ng ating mga ahensya, mga secretaries and undersecretaries. So, every month po, they gather uh, through a board meeting para pag-usapan ano na ba yung lagay ng problema natin sa droga? Ano ba yung mga kailangan polisiya? Ano ba yung mga kailangan programa? So, hindi po natin nagagawa yun nung nagkaroon ng pandemic. But, we adopted and we used the new technology to conduct yung mga virtual sessions ng Dangerous Drugs Board. So, tuloy-tuloy pa rin po yung uh, pag-iisip natin kung paano ba masusolusyonan itong ating problema sa droga. And since May 2020, uh, nung nag-umpisa na po yung ating mga lockdowns and community, community quarantine protocols, uh, naging virtual na po yung sessions ng DDB and last year we have parang about six board regulations na nai-release po natin. Uh, this 2021, uh, we were able to formulate and approve uh, eight regulations so far. At isa po dyan, ang unang regulation po na na-approve ngayong 2021 ay naging instrumental dito sa ating uh, pag-address ng pandemya. Kung uh, maalala nyo po or kung alam nyo po yung um, Chinese herbal medicine na Lianhua Kingwen King, uh, or Lianhua Kingwei, um, yung pong Chinese herbal medicine na yon have been found to address yung mga symptoms ng COVID-19 tulad ng mga ubo, uh, sore throat, lagnat. Ni-register po yan uh, dito sa ating bansa. At nakita po natin na yung Lianua, meron pala siyang content na ephedrine. So ephedrine po is a dangerous drugs. It's a uh, controlled precursor. Kaya naman, dadaan siya sa DDB talaga dapat. So bawal siyang gamitin, basta-basta. So isa sa mga regulation po na in ng Dangerous Drugs Board, they exempted Lianua for a period of one year para makatulong po dun sa pag-address natin ng pandemya. Sa so, pumamagitan po nun, nakita kasi natin, may ephedrine content man siya. Hindi naman ganun kadaling extract yung ephedrine content niya from the medicine. So, uh, hindi siya magagamit ng uh, sama-sama or malabong ma-divert ma yung substance. So, what the DDB did, was to exempt Lianwa for a period of one year from regulatory control, katulad ng ibang mga dangerous drugs na merong legitimate medical use. So, mas madali po yung pag-access dun sa herbal medicine na yun, dun sa mga nangailangan ng ganung gamot. So, ganun po yung ginagawa natin sa DDB. So, kahit na um, parang kumbaga, ang ating pong advokasya ay tungkol sa illegal na droga, kahit pa parang nakatulong din po tayo dito sa ating uh, laban kontra naman dito sa pandemya. Alright, so we also have yung ating mga webinars. Nagkaroon tayo ng fact talk series on different uh, anti-drug topics. Yung ating mga webinars or yung ating mga seminars and workshops na we conducted before na face-to-face, -face, ginagather natin yung ating mga participants we were able to transform our programs, naging virtual po sila, at naiko-conduct na natin uh, virtually sa ating mga participants, tulad nung mga uh, training for effective parenting, uh, yung mga life skills training natin, updates on board regulations, training for judges, uh, for prosecutors, for law enforcers. Lahat po yan nagagawa natin ngayon virtually.
And we also strengthened our social media presence dahil alam naman po namin ngayon na uh, ang source po ng information ng ating mga kababayan usually uh, nasa social media po yan, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. So pinalakas din po namin yung presence namin sa social media. So makikita nyo po, meron pong social media page, Facebook page ng Dangerous Drugs Board at nakapost po doon yung mga programa natin at iba't iba pang impormasyon na uh, pwede pong magamit ng ating mga stakeholders at kung saan matututo rin po yung ating mga kababayan. So yan po yung mga ginagawa natin ngayon. At kung uh, ifa-follow nyo po yung ating mga social media pages, ma-update po kayo kung ano yung mga programa na available, kung ano yung mga training, mga workshops na pwede po kayo mag-join. We also usually stream our webinars, our workshops on Facebook para po mas marami tayong nare-reach. So yun po ang na-realize natin ngayong pandemya. No? Uh, hindi man tayo nakapag-gather physically, face-to-face, Uh, kumbaga, nare-reach pa rin natin yung mga target audience natin and even beyond, kahit po nasa ibang lugar sila, nare-reach pa rin natin sila kasi we were able to stream our webinars, our trainings online through Facebook. So, i-follow nyo pong aming social media page para po makuha kayo na update. So, ang aming pong Facebook page ay uh, may handle na at ddbgov, ddbgov. So makikita nyo po yan sa Facebook. Alright, meron din po kaming partnership with other agencies like the Department of Education. Meron po tayong tinatawag na teledokasyon. So meron tayong mga video or curated materials, mga modules on drugs and substance abuse prevention. Meron din po tayong tinatawag na National Drug Education Program. Uh, uh, halos uh, ano po yan, regular program po ng DepEd na pinapalabas din nila sa social media. On treatment and rehabilitation naman, isipin po natin paano kaya ipinagpatuloy yung mga treatment programs nung panahon ng pandemya. Siguro po si attorney narinig ko kanina parang uh, meron po siyang uh, connected po siya sa isang treatment and rehabilitation and he can also share how Uh, it continued amidst the pandemic kung paano po tinutugunan yung pangailangan ng ating mga clients, ng ating mga patients sa mga rehab centers. So on treatment and rehabilitation, tuloy-tuloy po yung mga counseling and support na ibinibigay ng iba't mga organization. So meron po tayo uh, from a Christian group, nagbibigay sila ng online uh, recovery support for our persons or person who use drugs. Nandiyan din po yung tinatawag na Narcotics Anonymous. So meron po yung online, and, uh, online sessions. And our LGUs also continued their community-based treatment and rehabilitation programs. In-adjust po nila yung kanila mga programa. Meron din na po tayo ngayon mga um, parang telemedicine or teleconsultation, uh, telecounseling. Uh, for those who need uh, the services. So, yung ating pong mga LGUs, in-extend din nila yung ganyang mga serbisyo. And uh, on the part of the DDB naman, isa sa mga polisiya na ginawa natin to ensure na tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung ating mga programa sa treatment and rehabilitations. rehabilitation, we um, formulated uh, yung mga treatment, prevention, and infection control programs on rehabilitation centers. So naglabas po tayo ng resolution on that. So meron po tayo mga uh, provisions on parang engineering and ventilation, uh, uh, parang engineering and ventilation services na dapat i-adjust ng mga TRCs, yung ating mga protocols on admissions. Nireview rin po natin yan and in-adjust natin to ensure na hindi naman po Um, maapektuhan yung kanila mga serbisyo, magtutuloy-tuloy pa rin yung kanila mga serbisyo at hindi po malalagay sa panganib din yung ating mga patients and clients. All right, we also digitize our services. Alam naman po natin ngayon na the technology helped us ease our way into uh, 
our everyday living into the new normal. So naging katulong po natin technology. So yung mga once manual processes po natin, ginawa na natin digital so that tuloy-tuloy po siya at hindi po siya maapektuhan ng pandemya. So meron po tayong tinatawag namin na online application for certification exemption information system. So yan po kasi yung mga legitimate companies na gumagamit ng dangerous drugs um, in their products, nag apply po yan ng certification and exemption sa aming ahensya. So dati pumupunta pa po sila sa opisina namin to file the application. Pero ngayon po, we have the system kung saan online na po yung filing nila ng application. Payments for the processing of the application po and yung mga nagpaparegister na mga doctors ng uh, S2 licenses para makapagreseta sila ng mga medicines with dangerous drugs. Lahat po ng mga payment na yan, online na rin po. We have an online payment system na rin po through Land Bank. So yung mga serbisyo po natin, tuloy-tuloy po yan kahit mag-lockdown man, kahit may mga quarantine protocols po tayo, pwede natin pong magawa uh, uh, online. So ginawa po natin available yan. Uh, we also have other initiatives na nakatulong din po ngayong pandemya. So we donated isolation tents sa ating mga TRC. So dahil po hindi na tayo ngayon nakapag-face to face gathering, hindi tayo nakapagbigay ng ating mga information materials, mga brochures, uh, posters. So ang ginawa po ng DDB instead of printing out information materials, ginawa na po namin digital in the form of infographics, videos, and yung ating uh, natipid na budget pinang donate po natin na isolation tents. Pinagawa po natin na isolation tents and we donated this to government treatment and rehabilitation facilities, pati na mga community-based facilities. We also supported a study by the a study on nutrition management by the FDA. So meron po silang study kung paano ba natin mamamanage yung um, parang diet and yung health ng ating mga patients. So meron po yung manual. And we also partnered with the National Dairy Authority para makapagbigay naman po yung mga dairy products sa ating mga TRC. So last year, inumpisa, last year and 2021, inumpisa na po yan. So meron po tayong initial beneficiaries ng mga TRCs na, na nabigyan po natin ng mga milk products para po makatulong dun sa health and pagmamanage ng health and diet na ating mga patients. All right, so I think that's the last slide po. Um, and if we have time, I can accommodate uh, some few questions din po from you. If you have any questions po. So yun pong mga programa na, programa na pinakita ko, yan po ang mga current programs na ginagawa ng DDB kung saan pwede din po na, namin kayo maging partner at pwede nyo rin pong isagawa sa inyong organisasyon. Sir Mark, baka po may mga questions po okay. ang mga participants. Uh, sige, uh, later, after Attorney Mar Marlon Yap. Uh, okay. Alright, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that was a very informative discussion from Ms. Ella Marie. Very well explained, madam. Okay, um, may we call on our next speaker, Attorney Marlon Yap. You may now begin, Attorney. Yes, good evening, everyone. So let me just uh, share screen. Oh, disabled po yung share ah, okay. screen. <laughs> uh, in a while, in a while. Okay, Attorney, go ahead. Okay, uh, let's see. Ayan po, uh, PVADE uh, joins in the celebration of the Drug Control and Prevention Week. And we are glad to be part of this, really, from PVADE in Lapu-Lapu City, from where I am. So, so ayan po, ako po yung speaker niyo for now. Uh, just make this short, dati po akong court attorney of Court of Appeals. And then after the Court of Appeals po, 
Ito po, nag-found po ako ng isang assisted living facility dito po sa Lapu-Lapu City. Tapos now, we are now in the process also of organizing Solace Addiction Treatment Incorporated. Isa po itong faith-based na addiction treatment facility, but we don't just focus on the faith po because while we are in this world, there's also the physical aspect to consider. Okay? Now, to continue... Ito po yung theme natin, better knowledge for better care. Now, bakit po ganito? Why is it why is knowledge so important? Now, it's because sabi po ni uh, sabi po ni Plato, si Plato pa nagsabi ito, ignorance is the root and stem of all evil, di ba? Kasi nga pag hindi mo alam, na uh, Hindi mo alam, may ginawa ka na palang masama, may nasagasaan ka na. With a simple reason na hindi mo alam. And isa pong big example po nito, yung bubonic plague po, nung nangyari ito nung mga 1347 sa Europe, where 33% of the world's population na matay. Dahil layo na ng COVID natin ngayon. No? The bubonic plague. 33% talaga ang namatay. Tapos ito yung nag ng Salem Witch Hunt kasi akala nila Satanism yung nag ng mga deaths. Which it turns out, isa pa lang bacteria. It's called Bacterium Yersinia pestis. No? Bacteria lang. Ang dami nang nangyari. Now, moving on. Ito si Icarus, pati sa Greek mythology. Uh, he flew too close to the sun kasi hindi niya alam na mainit pala. Uh, yun. So yung wax on his wings, it melted and he fell to the earth and he died. Now from the point of view of the law, meron din tayo niyan. Sinasabi nito itong Latin maxim, ignorantia legis, non excusat. Uh, sa English po niyan, it means ignorance of the law is no excuse. So it is, kaya po ganito yung theme natin. Better knowledge or better care. Knowledge is really important po. So we can extend our advocacy and care for others who need our help. Okay po. Now, just a brief overview kasi sinabi po ng ating representative from the DDB na itong Republic Act 9165. So let us take a brief uh, look at the punitive aspect of this law. So now the Punitive aspects, it is contained from section 4 to section 35. Now, the more important ones, ito po yun. Uh, section 4, importation. Ito po, life imprisonment po ito. Now, the mo one of the most common, ano, ito mo nang, section 6, maintenance of a drug den, yan, life imprisonment din yan. Section 8, manufacture, ganun din, life imprisonment. Now, isa po sa pinaka most common dito sa Philippines na one of the most common cases in court, itong Section 5. Uh, usually, pag tinatanong mo sila, selling. Okay, may selling sila. And kahit ano pong amount yan, kahit maliit lang yan, even if it's just uh, 0 0.001 grams, basta it's selling, life imprisonment dapat yan. So, another most common offense is Section 11, yung possession. Tapos, ano po, when mga 10 grams, pata, no, 50 grams, when it comes to methamphetamine hydrochloride, life imprisonment din po yan. And then, another more common na case also is ito pong use of dangerous drugs. Now, we uh, a lot of those who are charged under the dangerous, uh, comprehensive dangerous drugs act of 2003, right now po, are very, masabi nating fortunate. Swerte sila. Kasi in so many instances, dapat sana life imprisonment na. Good thing po, uh, there was this portion in Republic Act 9165 which was declared unconstitutional. Yun po yung bawal mag plea bargaining. Kasi daw, it encroaches on the prerogative of the courts to you know set rules. Now, ngayon may plea bargaining. So they usually plea bargain to Section 12. Yung, or 13, yung, ano, 12, yung possession ng mga paraphernalia, which is uh, pwede kang mag-probation. So yun po, swerte po sila ngayon na medyo lenient po. Masabi natin the law is now a bit lenient sa mga drug offenders. Okay. Now, ayan po, overview lang yan ng mga punitive aspect ng Republic Act 9165. And if you actually think about it, 
The law is actually nakakatakot. Imagine, life imprisonment. Kaya, nagtataka ako, why is it that despite the ano, the heaviness of the penalty, ba't ang dami pa drug offenders? Ba't hindi sila natakot? In fact, nung hindi pa yung tinagal yung death penalty, a lot of these provisions, death po yung, ano, death yung penalty. But still, somehow, they are not afraid. Uh, yun pong mga masasabi nating may substance use disorder, hindi po takot. Yeah. Bakit kaya? <laughs> so, I think a lot of this has to do with knowledge po. Knowledge. So, which is why it's very important po itong curative aspect ng number 65, which has a lot to do with rehabilitation. Yun po. Because ta ang tao naman po, they are, we are rational beings. No? Uh, if we only know uh, the affliction that we have, then we can actually do something about it. Uh, kasi when you are in denial, para pong tao na sabihin nating nasa bundok, di ba? Uh, he doesn't know that he doesn't know how to drive. Kasi nga po, wala nga mga, wala mga vehicles doon sa pinaka malayong bukid. So he doesn't know that he does not know how to drive. Now, once he knows, pag pumunta siya doon sa sabi nating siyudad, when he goes to the city, makikita niya may masasakyan, sabi niya, nako, pala, hindi pala ako marunong mag-drive kasi oh, oh, may mga substitute pala ng kalabaw. Okay. And then later on, when he learns how to drive, Oh, it's so easy. Ganito pala mag-transport ng aking mga goods from the bukid to the city. It's so easy once he knows how to drive. Ganun din po yung marakaramihan ng mga masabi natin may substance use disorder. Uh, they do not know that they have a problem. Yan po. So that is why uh, hindi sila natatakot kasi alam mo naman isa ng, isang effects ng drugs is yung my false sense of bravado ka parang akala mo. Brave na brave ka, hindi ka na infallible ka, you don't make mistakes. So, parang feeling mo, mas bright ka pa sa police, mas bright ka pa sa presidente, <laughs> kasi wala, wala kang takot. But if these people po are educated, then they have a chance. I know of so many instances po na ilang beses na pong nag -rehab. Parang hopeless case na. But eventually, my God, naging may-ari ng rehab. Dating salot ng lipunan, now po helping hundreds of people recover. So, there is something there no, to treatment and rehabilitation. And that is where I want to focus po. Here we go. Now, Republic at 965, as mentioned by our good uh, colleague from the DDB, Miss Ella, hindi po lahat about punishment. So that is just the most common thing we see on TV, on radio. What is very not known, uh, ano po, hindi po well known, but equally, in fact, I'd say even more important than the punitive aspects are the curative aspects of the law. Now, we will find this po dito sa section 54. Ito po yung first one. Now, under section 54, this is what we call the voluntary submission of a drug dependent to confinement, treatment, and rehabilitation. Now, this is very important kasi when we go to the police, uh, pati yung police po, they're not really very familiar with this provision. Dito po sa section 54, pwedeng actually ito yung maging vehicle that a person can get treatment before he can commit an offense. Now, normally when you go to the police, sasabihin nilang, The knowledge that a crime has been committed, I know, and the person uh, he has to arrest is the one responsible for it. So, isa yun. Second, kung may warrant, those are the only two instances po na pwede siya mag-arrest. Na kung ikaw, sabihin natin isa kang parent, and sabihin mo, 
uh, or sabihin natin, concerned citizen. Tapos yung uh, neighbor mo is a drug dependent. So nagreklamo ka ng pulis. Yun yung sasabihin na pulis, I'm sorry po. We cannot arrest that person because kailangan pa namin machimpuhan na nag-sell or in possession. Now, yung mga things na yun po, hindi naman po yung basta-basta magawa. You can't just go to a person tapos kaptapin mo, hanapan mo ng, ng may drugs or ano, baka ma, ano ka pa niyan, uh, masabit pa naman yung police po, kawawa naman po. So, what a lot of people do not know is there's actually a way to compel these people who are actively using drugs to go into treatment and rehabilitation even before they commit an offense. Now, one of these po, itong Section 54. Now, pwede po that they can voluntarily present themselves for treatment and rehabilitation. Kasi, ano po, a drug dependent or any person who violates Section 15, yun po yung using, may by himself or through his parent, guard, or relative up to the fourth degree, apply sa board. Ayan, kaya po tuwang-tuwa ako na may DDB ngayon dito. Kasi essential po dito yung participation ng DDB sa voluntary submission for treatment and rehabilitation. So, doon po kayo mag-apply sa board tapos the board will authorize you or yung board mismo will file the petition in your behalf na masubmit ka for treatment and rehabilitation. Before po, again, I repeat, before an offense is committed. No? So no need na po na mag-violate mo yung Section 5. No need na na ma-violate mo yung Section 11 or Section 15. There's actually Section 54 where we can convince our loved ones to submit themselves to treatment and rehabilitation. Now the question may be asked, alam naman po natin yung mga actively using, in denial po yan. Kung sasabihin mong, eh, adi ka na, sasabihin yan, eh, manageable pa po to. Hindi po po ako adi, patry-try lang. Pero yun po, nakikita natin yung mata, uh, laki na. <laughs> yung skin, so dry. No longer going to school. Nag-fired na sa job. Pinabayaan na yung pamilya. In denial. Diba? Ang good news po, there is actually another section for that. Also, about, before we go on though, Sa yung mga voluntary submission for treatment and rehabilitation, pwede nyo pong makonvince yun sila na accept sila sa criminal liability. Again, oh, importante, importante. Before po na, if you can want to try to convince a loved one, you can always say this. Before po, you can violate a law. Do not worry if you submit yourself, exempt ka po from criminal liability. Tapos second, sakali mang hindi ka mag-qualify sa mga uh, kasi may mga ano yan, standards, dapat nag-follow siya sa rules ng center, hindi siya na-charge ng any offense under Republic Act 9165 or hindi nag-escape, tapos hindi siya nag-post ng danger to himself, to his family or the community. So sabihin natin, yun kasi yung mga under Section 55, yun yung mga requirements para ma-exempt from criminal liability. But wag po kayong mag-alala, sabihin man natin may criminal liability kasi hindi ka qualified probationable naman po. So, hindi ka pa rin makukulong. Diba? So, ano po, magandang ano na po yan, incentive sa mga, uh, sa mga may substance use disorder to convince them to submit themselves kasi po, pag ikaw po ay nahuli under Section 15, 6 years and 1 day to 12 years po yan ang penalty. Pero kung mag-voluntarily submit po, exempt po from criminal liability. So yun po yung gamitin nating pang-convince sa ating mga mahal sa buhay na lulong sa droga. Okay? Now what if ayaw nila mag-submit? As I said a while ago. Ito po yun. The good news is meron po tayong Section 61. Ito po yung compulsory confinement of a drug dependent who refuses to apply under the voluntary submission program. So ano po ito? Notwithstanding any law or rule to the contrary, any person determined and found to be dependent on dangerous drugs shall upon petition by the board or its authorized representative be confined for treatment and rehabilitation in any center duly designated or accredited by the board. So yun. Alam naman natin ang daming mga may substance use disorder na in denial. Ayong mag-admit. Feeling guapo. 
kahit na wala nang nangangamoy na, ang taas na ng buhok, ang red ng eyes, but feeling guapo pa rin. <laughs> so, in denial nga, there is a way. There is a way to uh, compel them na pumasok po sa rehabilitation. Now, upon petition po, under the same section, uh, the confinement of a person alleged to be dependent on dangerous drugs to a center may be filed by any person authorized by the board, the dangerous drugs board po, with the regional trial court of the province or city where such person is found. Now, after the petition is filed, the court by an order shall immediately fix a date for hearing and a copy of the order shall be served with the person. Uh, let's go to the end part. Yan po. Uh, there will be two physicians who will examine the persons in a process called DDE, yan po yung drug dependency evaluation. Now, if these two physicians, they concur that the person is a drug dependent, then the court will order na i-confine po itong taong ito sa uh, Drug Addiction Treatment and Rehabilitation Center. So, yan po. I always, I always make emphasis nitong whenever I discuss Republic Act 9165, I always make emphasis sa Section 54 and Section 61 because ito po yung mga provisions na wala pang crime na, na, na wala pang crime. Hindi pa nakulong, hindi pa nasira yung future ng ating loved ones. Hindi pa nasira yung future ng ating brother, sister, o father. Diba? Before that happens, kasi wala pong criminal liability, especially under Section 54. Wala po. So habang hindi pa nasira yung future nila, we can actually compel them to go to rehabilitation with the help of the Dangerous Drugs Board. Okay? Now, of course, uh, may iba-iba naman yung ano yung uh, severity ng addiction. So kung mild ka, there is always Section 77 of Republic Act 9165 where you just go to community-based rehabilitation circles. You know? Meron din kung uh, sabi mild, moderate ka naman, uh, there's always the outpatient program, pero kung severe talaga, yun na yung mga nang hold up na, you know, kumukuha na ng pera sa you know, bulsa ni mama, papa, uh, binibenta na yung mga pati mga pyrex. So, pag ganong level na po, severe na po yun, and kailangan na po yung talagang ipasok sa rehabilitation through Section 54 and Section 61 of Republic Act 9165. Now, can be filed with the DDB and any person authorized by the board, which is the DDB, may file the petition in the appropriate regional trial court. So yun po yung ano, no? good news ng Republic Act 9165, which is not very known by a lot of people. Okay, now, ito po. Now that I've imparted po these sections, very useful sections, before anyone po makakommit ng crime na life imprisonment na mahal natin, let's do something. All of us, let's do something to those people who need our help. Kasi a lot of these people who are, who my, my substance use disorder, they're actually good people with bad habits. Po. Mabait po kasi man is created in the image of God. Uh, likas. It is our nature po to be good. Now, good people with bad habits. If you take away the bad habit po, mababalik po yung good person. Yung tatay mo, yung nanay mo, yung anak mo na good, innately good, babalik po yun if you take away the bad habit. The bad habit po of using drugs. Now, let's all do something. And there is the way to do it now with the help of the DDB because the only thing necessary for evil to triumph po is for good men to do nothing. Okay. Thank you po for listening po to me. Uh, back to you, Sir Mark. Okay. Um, okay, thank you very much, uh, Attorney. That was uh, very detailed information that you just shared with us. That was very educational, Attorney Marlon. And again, thank you. Okay, yun po yung mga speakers natin for our program, Drug Free Philippines Movement. Okay, guys, we will welcome you to any questions.
everybody from the audience or from our participants, anyone? Mark. Uh, yes, you can share your thoughts. Yes, go ahead, Paul. Uh, JP, okay, Regional Assistant, Regional 7 Director. Go ahead, JP. Uh, good evening sa lahat po. Uh, yung sinabi po ni Atty. Marlon Niaps, tama po yun. Pag nandyan yung vision na yan, yung bad habit na yan, talaga lalo na yung sa shabu na yan, yung metamphenamine hydrochloride, talagang mawawala yung mga uh, mahal mo sa buhay, yung respeto nila, iiwasan ka ng mga tao na ayaw sa ganyan. At totoo yun, mawawala ka ng mga gamit at mga ano, ari-arian. Lalo na, profession, profession mo. Yung career mo, uh, magda-down din. Totoo yung sinabi niya lahat at ang nangyayari yun sa akin. Kaya ngayon, pinaglit ko na yung bad habit na yan. Ito, unti-unti na bumalik at uh, almost complete na nga. So, pinagkatiwalaan na ako ulit. Ito, maganda na ang takbo ng buhay. Kahit mahirap, uh, mahirap man, kayod ng kayod, pero enjoy at Hindi ka na nababahala sa mga galaw mo kung saan ka pumupunta, hindi ka palingon-lingon or patihintingin kung nag-oobserbar kung sino ba yung mga tao na yan at idepensahan mo yung kasarili mo na paka eto na yon Kaya maganda po yon Sana isaisip natin yon at ma-share natin pa yon sa ibang mga kapag-anak natin na wala dito sa meeting natin. Maraming salamat po, Mark. Sir Mark. At Sir Marlon, uh, Yep, maraming salamat po na nag-share kayo ng ganun thoughts po. Thank you po. Okay, uh, that was a good uh, questions. Okay, um, anyone uh, can share their thoughts on the topic? By the way, I would like to acknowledge our youth sector. Gaylord, andyan ka pa ba Gaylord? Okay, Lord. Ah, nag out na. So, anyone? Si Sky. Uh, Sky from Camarena Sur. Sky, may tanong ka ba? Or may gusto kang i-share? Anyone? Well, I, I have no question, Mark. But as a, uh, a congratulation ano sa atin napakagaling na mga ano uh, speaker talagang uh, we we learn a lot especially sa ating mga advocates no uh, medyo nalulungkot lang ako medyo kulang ang bilang natin ano hopefully sa ibang ano sa ibang pagkakataon ay mas marami pa tayong mga PBIT advocates sa buong Pilipinas we are representing Mindanao we have our Pibate from Mindanao, from Visayas, from Luzon. And thank you so much, Attorney Marlon Yap. Hopefully, uh, makarating din ako dyan sa, ano nyo, sa iyong rehab centers. Kasi nasa rehab centers din ako together with ano, kilala ni Ella yan, si Arnoel Santos. Kami yung in charge sa Marikina Rehabilitation Center. Okay, and mas maganda makapag ano rin kami dyan. Anyway, thank you so much then, Ma'am Ella Marie. On behalf of Colonel uh, Rodrigo Bonifacio, thank you so much. No? Napakagandang uh, aral mula sa amin, mula sa inyo, at kami naman ay nagbe-benefits dito. Well, uh, thank you so much that, for that. Wala naman akong ano, Mark, as a okay, okay. lang sa kanila. But, yeah. But ano lang pala, may ano, good announcement ako, yung ating accreditation from the BGMP NCR I approved no uh, we can we can enter any uh, bureau of jail management all over from NCR only you know and hopefully sa ibang bansa ibang ano mag nationwide pero sabi ko NCR muna uh, makakapasok na tayo sa mga BGMP uh, facilities uh, to to conduct a drug prevention uh, program uh, also treatment, meron naman tayong program for them and uh, legal counseling and psycho-spiritual and psycho-education psycho-social, samahan na rin natin thank you, that's a good news from PBA family and yun lang po, uh, thank you for your prayer na 
na pagkakatiwalaan tayo ng mga ahensya ng pamahalaan ng gobyerno na maging bahagi para makatulong sa kanilang mga uh, person deprived of liberty. Thank you. Okay, uh, may mga uh, katanungan dito sa chat uh, chat box natin from PV Dumaguete. Question to DDP, uh, do you uh, deliberate uh, deliberate place before giving them, them a certificate na drug free place? Uh, okay, deliberate. Kailangan pa bang i-deliberate yung mga nag apply for drug free workplace siguro yun yung ibig sabihin yes po uh, for yung ating drug drug clearing operations drug clearing policy po uh, there's a committee composed of uh, representatives of different agencies na siya nagre-review ng mga requirements natin to be able to declare uh, a city a municipality a barangay as drug free or drug cleared so dapat masunod yung mga parameters na yun so may nagre-review po niya na committee Dine-deliberate po yan. Okay, thank you. And I would like to acknowledge yung kuha natin, uh, uh, Regional Director sa uh, Region 7, Attorney Richard Abangan. Attorney, uh, any thoughts regarding our topic, uh, an interaction? Hello, uh, good evening guys. Good evening, uh, good evening Marlon. Good evening, good evening sir. Uh, actually, maganda yung ano, no, presentation ng dalawa nating speakers and marami ako natutunan sa uh, DAPS at saka sa, of course, sa mga provisions ni ano, no, na present ni Attorney Marlon. Actually, may mga ibang provisions doon na, 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 na nakakatulong talaga. Uh, and then, uh, maganda yung presentation. No? Uh, actually, uh, yung securative aspect ng provisions Uh, maganda talaga yun na uh, malaman ng lahat ng mga tao kasi alam ko marami kasi akong cases ngayon na takot talaga na, na pumunta ng rehab yung meron ako mga actually mga kaibigan dito no, na drug dependent talaga pero nagtatago sila eh takot sila sa takot sila pumunta ng ano ng mga uh, agencies para tum, para, tum, para tulungan sila para sa rehabilitation So, maganda talaga ito na i-disseminate ang information sa mga public. And for you pala, uh, Tony, Mark, uh, Tony Yap, meron pala akong tanong sa'yo. Uh, for you ba, meron ba bang provisions ng, ng, ng RA9165 na dapat baguhin? Ah, yes po. I'd like to, actually, yun po yung sinabi ko kanina that I'd like to take this opportunity opportunity pala na we have someone here from the DDB. Kasi po, ano po, itong curative aspect nga po where I am focusing right now, uh, medyo circuitous po yung ano, circuitous yung <laughs> uh, pag-file ka pa ng, sa DDB, tapos yung DDB ba pa mag-authorize sa'yo. Uh, so ito po yung tanong ko, is the DDB uh, exploring the possible amendment po na pwedeng dumiretso na po yung mga kinatawag nating co-dependents o yung mga loved ones na mga addicts, kung pwede ba silang dumiretso na sa korte instead of dadaan pa po sa DDB tapos yung DDB pa pa authorize sa kanila o yung DDB mismo ang mag-file ng case. ba diba? So the process is kind of long po. Uh, that is what I'm, I was gonna ask for Miss Ella if they're exploring the possibility of suggesting an amendment na pwede na pong dumiretso yung mga loved ones to the courts para mas mabilis po yung action kasi may, minsan po it only takes a week mag-overdose na pagka next week so the time is of the essence po so yun po miss ella po. thank you for bringing that up no attorney marlo no ah uh, dadi di po, po kasi are uh, also reviews yung ating mga procedures na nasa ating batas rin po and uh, i-create tayo ng mga TWGs to review kung may mga pangailangan po bang baguhin sa ngayon po yung provision na yon on the process, um, parang wala pa po siya sa lineup natin ng mga possible amendments kasi ang tinitingnan po natin ngayon, more on community-based treatment and rehab. Pero what we do po kasi, we regularly conduct para mga gatherings ng ating mga judges, prosecutors, and law enforcers 
And kung mabobrota po yung ganyang isyo doon, yun po yung mga posibleng tingnan natin. Kasi po yung mga gathering na yun, yun po talaga ang pakay nun para malaman natin ano ba yung mga ideas from the ground, ano ba yung na-experience ng ating mga stakeholders, meron ba tayong pwedeng gawin na solution dito or work around, pwede ba natin baguhin yung mga policies and procedures. So I think yung sinasabi nyo, attorney, we can bring that up to our officers, to our officials, para matingnan po natin yung pangailangan na tingnan din yung ganong uh, provision ng batas. Kung pwede na bang ma-scrap yung, um, ano na yun, yung provision na yun or kung ano po yung pwede natin gawin. Sa ngayon po kasi yung mga provisions na yun are in place to also protect the law from being abused kasi po may mga iba po na nagpapasok din na halimbawa galit lang sila sa relative nila so gusto nilang ipasok sa rehab so ano po siya parang measures in place to prevent those from happening pero titignan po natin yan attorney so possibly po na tingnan niya ng board kung kailangan po bang i-amend yung ating do pagdating sa treatment and rehabilitation process Thank you Pate uh, Excuse me, pwede po ako magtanong uh, Sir Mark Okay, good, good, Tony. Uh, Miss Ella, uh, Miss Ella, for clarification lang po. Uh, ang dangerous drug board ba ay may ano, uh, power or authority to exempt certain prohibited drugs or pre precursors? Yes, sir, Richard. Kasi po ang DDB po uh, can uh, add or the list um, Uh, substances or chemicals from the list of dangerous drugs. Uh, yung meron pong ganong power yung dangerous drugs board. So pwede natin exempt or katulad po ng ginawa natin dun sa Lianwa, na herbal medicine, we exempted that from uh, regulatory control katulad ng yung dangerous drugs for a period of one year. So meron po tayong mga pwedeng gawin na ganong mga uh, policies. Thank you po. Okay. Uh, may tanong rin si Sky. Sky Runato. Ano ba? Um, sigurado ka ba sa tanong mo, Sky? Ito si Sky, assistant, kuwente, uh, nurse, nursing assistant sa isang hospital. Uh, may tanong siya kung bakit ba daw nag-iinuman yung mga ano to, staff sa, sa loob ng hospital sa ano to, quarantine facility. So meron bang batas dito na ano to? Uh, pinagbabawal yung pag-inom sa loob ng government uh, facility. Anyone from the speakers? May tanong si Sky from the from Pivade uh Ako po ay not quite sure about the policies on that po, you know, in drinking alcohol. Pero uh, coming from an anti-drug agency, we are also advocate po for prevention ng alcohol use kasi po ito po ay nakikita natin na gateway substances. Base nga po dun sa last survey, yung ating 2019 survey on the patterns and trends of drug abuse in the Philippines, nakita po natin doon no na... Um, Marami sa mga gumagamit na uh, marami sa mga nagso-smoke at na umiinom ng alcohol, meron silang inclination to also use drugs lalo na kung bata pa sila nagumpisa sa paggamit ng uh, pag-inom ng alcohol at paninigarilyo. So, ina-advocate din po namin na uh, ma-prevent yung paggamit na ay yung pag-engage ng ating mga kababayan sa mga ganong substances. Pero on yung mga protocols po natin sa quarantine facilities, uh, hindi, po, hindi ko po alam kung ano po ba yung mga provisions nila on that. Sigurado po, bawal naman talaga. Pero hindi po natin, hindi po tayo sure kung ano yung mga pinapatupad naman nila ng mga policies sa kanila mga facilities. Okay. Uh, sana may Uh, ano to, na, na, na nasagot yung uh, katanungan mo, Sky. Okay, uh, another question from the PV uh, Dumaguete City. Um, ano ba to? Um, Ma'am Ella, may I ask if ang um, Dangerous Drugs Board rin po ba ang nag-deputize ng mga PDEA, PNP, and other agencies na nanghuhuli ng illegal drugs? 
In terms of operations po ng law enforcement, uh, hindi po nagde-deputize ang DDB. Meron pong uh, parang kumbaga uh, personnel na ina-assign yung PDEA, PNP, and other law enforcement agencies. What the DDB deputize po ay yung ating mga authorized personnel, authorized DDB personnel, yung binanggit po ni Attorney Marlon Kinina. Yung nagre-represent po ng uh, ating mga patients sa court, nag-file ng petitions, yan po ay dinideputize ng DDB, inauthorize ng DDB. Kasi po ang DDB, wala po tayong mga regional offices, isa lang po opisina ng DDB sa Quezon City. Pero ang ginagawa po natin, yung mga personnel ng Office of the Solicitor General, yung um, uh, PPA, and uh, some members of the PDEA and the City and Municipal Anti-Drug Abuse Councils, sila po yung dinideputize natin to uh, assist our clients to file petitions for confinement and treatment and rehabilitation support. Pero pag sa law enforcement po, hindi po tayo nagdideputize. Okay. Uh, again, uh, my question rin si Attorney Richard. Go ahead, Attorney. Nagtaas ka ng kamay. Uh, attorney Richard. Hi, sorry, sorry na hindi ko pala na lower hand. Okay, okay. Wala na po akong um, question. Ah, so. oh, sige, sige. Ah, uh, ito, i-acknowledge ko yung presence sa atuang sa sa ating youth sector, yung president ng uh, Youth uh, National si Sir Gaylord Bermejo. Sir Gaylord. Oh, yes, oh, good evening. Anything you want to to share with us? Um, so far, po none, because everything was well explained from the speakers. So I don't have any clarif um clarifications or point of inquiry. Okay, that was our president, uh, youth sector. Mark, Mark, can, can we recognize Father Larry from Mindanao? Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, Father Larry, good evening. Good evening. Sir, recognize. Pati muna po kayo, Father Larry from... La Where in Mindanao are you? In Tagum City po. Yeah, Tagum City. Thank you, Father, for joining us. No, medyo gabi na po, late night na, but thank you so much for joining. Late din ako nakapasok kasi hindi ko nakuha yung link. <laughs> Sige, papadala ko na sa iyo directly next time para makaaga-aga ba. Thank you, Father, for joining our uh, seminar. Thank you for the speaker's put for a brilliant man. Okay, salamat, uh, Father. Uh, welcome ka dito sa program natin. Okay, uh, I think we are already done with our interaction with our guest speaker, with uh, Miss Ila Marie and attorney Marlon Yap. It seems that we really learned a lot from them on how we educate ourselves to stay away from illicit drugs. Now, let us have a short recap on the things that we have learned in tonight's discussion. Sa nakikita ko ngayon, uh, it's nice to be, uh, to be part in this celebration on Drug Control Prevention Week by the Dangerous Drugs Board Philippines as private sector or a member of an NGO. We have this so-called social responsibility in our community. It is all about voluntarism to collaborate with our government programs. You know, guys, uh, the reason why I am supporting our NGO, kahit wala naman akong sahod dito, na-inspired lang ako sa isang dating U.S. president na nagsabi siya sa isang speech niya na... Um, she, she quote, he quote, ask not what your country can do for you, but rather ask what you can do for your country. Yun po yung essence of voluntarism. The importance and benefits of giving back to your community. Voluntarism or volunteering your time to support a cause. You are passionate about uh, something you will never regret. It will enrich your life, familiarize you with your community, and connect you to people and ideas that will positively impact your perspective for the rest of your life. 
helping your community is an opportunity for you to grow as a person to better under, understand how you fit in into the world around you. Why is it so important to give back to your community? Why is it so important to find a cause you love and volunteer your time? Spending time enriching your community is a great way to broaden your perceptions of the world. By immersing yourself in a community and surrounding yourself with people who are dedicated to bettering the world. You can learn so much about how the world works. You gain a unique sense of purpose by serving those around you, one which often manifests in other areas of your life. Of course, it's also important for your community. Without volunteers, many of services and events we enjoy in our communities would not be so readily available. Spending time helping out at local shelters or food banks provides an important service to less fortunate neighbors. Giving back to the place you call home helps to unite the community and bridge some of the social, economic, and political gaps. What are some of the benefits of the volunteering? Donating your time to support those around you is extremely beneficial. Both of you and your community, it is statist statistically proven that the people who volunteer regularly are healthier, both physical and mentally. Individuals who have volunteered throughout their lifetime typically live longer and have better psychological well-being. In addition to the health benefits, volunteering gives people a sense of purpose the fulfilling feelings of giving back and contributing to the society unparalleled. Giving back is also a great way to get to know your community and its citizens. While you volunteer, you have the opportunity to meet lots of people working alongside individuals who also care about improving their surroundings will allow you to broaden your networks of friends. Additionally, it will help you to, be, uh, to better understand the circumstances of another members of your community. Having a broad, open-minded perspective of different walks of life around you will help you to be an effective and empathetic citizen. According to Matt Gandhi, quotes, be the change you want to see in this world. You have the power within you to create the life what you want to live. You have the power to shape the world around you just by who you are. We are the master of our destiny. We can influence direct control of our environment. We can create our life what we want it to be. If you cannot do great things, do small things in a greater way. Don't wait. The time will never come perfect. Start where you stand and work with humility, with dignity and pride. Okay, guys, this is the end part of our program in Drug-Free Philippines Movement. I would like to thank our speaker and co-host. I thank you for the bottom of my heart for taking the time from your busy schedules just to be here, to be our speaker in our program, Drug-Free Philippines Movement. Your presence and wise words help magnify our cause in the best possible way. Our program is a huge success, all thanks to your enlightening words that inspires so many people out there. Okay, guys, I think you are all fantastic. Thank you for viewing and listening. I am looking forward that you will be sharing all your learnings to others. Have a wonderful evening. Just continue learning every day. This is your host in our program, Drug Fee Philippines Movement. Again, I am Mark Kadili. Vice President of PIBID or People's Volunteer Against Illegal Drugs is now saying to you, iwasan mo ang illegal na droga, siguradong panalo ka. Wishing a pleasant evening and God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. And good evening. Maraming salamat po. Salamat, salamat po. See you again on Saturday and Monday. Thank you, Mark.
God thank bless. You, good sir. Yeah, Restora, thank you, thank you. God bless. God bless. God bless. Thank you, Miss Ila. Ila Marie, thank you. Thank you po. Attorney Marlon. Thank you, sir, Mark. Thank you, thank you, pa. Okay.